basics of cyberspace and cyber security and in today's session we are going to talk about the very interesting topic that is dark web and also i'm going to cover surface web and little bit of deep web also that what are these three terminologies and also we are going to see that what is a tor browser is it illegal to access dark web or how we can protect ourselves from such things so that we are going to discuss in today's session so i hope that my audio is clear and my slides are also visible to everyone arik sir yeah okay so when we start with this dark web so dark web is the hidden collection of internet sites only accessible by a specialized web browser and we can use that specialized web browser only if we want to access dark web and it is generally used for keeping internet activities anonymous now what is the meaning of anonymous is that nobody can find out that who is accessing it so anonymous and private also which can be helpful in both legal and illegal operations so that's why whenever we say that something illegal is happening so we understood that okay this is happening in the dark web when in the previous lecture we see that our database is breached our email ids are breached so we say that the data is available for sale on the dark web because that is anonymous you cannot trace that person because there are a lot of loops and there are a lot of connections between the tor sites so that's very difficult and also like we can say that the internet is collection of millions of web pages right we all are agree with that the database is servers running 24 hours a day 365 we cannot even imagine a single seconds of downtime now this is all the visible net which we see and that is called as a surface web when we talk about this dark web this which is what we cannot see from our google chrome or from internet browser so this is a hidden web but the surface web which we see is a very small portion of the uh, things which are available on the internet that you will see gradually with my slides and also like the search engine as i told you the google yahoo whatever websites we browse that is all just a tip of iceberg means that's just a tip of the uh, things we can access on the internet internet is having collection of lot more kind of information and lot of things are non visible that is coming under the dark web and the deep web so that's why we are going to discuss these three important terminologies that is dark web deep web and surface web so surface web is the area which we can see i'll just take the pointer so surface web is the area like wikipedia google facebook which we can access like data extraction if we say is the most powerful tool like which enables us to access the things which are available online to gain the intelligence or to decide the business aspects like if you talk about the google we see advertisement on our mail so how those mails are coming how they are extracting the information right but if we are going to extract the information from the surface web which we see like from this part if you see that this is a small portion but this is a bigger portion which is behind the scene which we cannot access from the normal browsers so that's not only the sufficient so what we need is we need a deeper extraction process that allow us to check the high quality uh, contents which are mostly hidden like if you see in the deep web the media records subscription information government resources legal document financial records are all coming under deep web and if you talk about the dark web the onion sites drug trafficking political protest private communication that's coming in the dark web so we are only able to access the surface web so we are going to check a uh, difference between these three by understanding all these three portions of our web in detail so first we will be taking a surface web with which we all are familiar so surface web we know that the we can access from the google internet explorer we can open n number of websites which we want there is no restrictions in that but that is just the 5% of the total web you can see that what we are accessing is 5% of the total web so we can see that the data available on the surface is purposely indexed by the search engines and that's why you can see that 
so how that is indexed that also a little bit i will explain you in the next slide that how the contents will be indexed on the uh, search engine so that whenever we are trying to find something we are able to do that and that's why we are only able to like uh, find the information because that information is indexed and we can say that the surface net is the part of the web which is available to the public and accessible by the uh, search engines like bling i yahoo so a lot of search, search engines are there and also if we say that the surf web is visible layer so you can see that this is coming above the sea level you can see that so we can see the surface level surface web but we cannot see deep web or dark web for that we need a uh, some different methods to access and also we can see that uh, we are accessing only as i told you is the 5% off so this figure is important that we are only see the little bit of things which are public facing websites which public can access why the traditional browsers which we have and also the websites which are usually labeled with .com or .org that is coming under this category and that will be indexed with the search engine and also we can locate the search uh, surface websites uh, because the search engine is ex uh, like the indexing it with the help of the crawling so there are a lot of crawler softwares available through which the search engine is crawling the websites and storing the websites and because of that the index is created and the people like us will be able to do that and these are called as web spiders also which are crawling the pages which are available and adding to the search engine so as and when new website is coming the crawlers are crawling and with the help of the crawlers that is added so this is about the surface web which we can access it but whatever you are typing in the search bar and whenever you are searching it so how it is going to check or how it is going to add to the database that we are going in the second point but from this particular slide what you have to uh, take as a outcome is the first point is surface web which is publicly available public can access it with the browsers which are there like google yahoo bling so all these uh, browsers which are there we can access it and all the websites which we are accessing that is public facing means publicly open and public can access that but that is only the 5% of the total web so now we are seeing that how web content will be indexed so if you see this this is a global search engine uh, search index for the surface web so whenever you are searching this so what is happen is if your content is already indexed in the database if your content is available in this index you will be able to access that but what happen is the search engine as i told you use these spiders to travel across the net and they are looking for these pages as you are seeing these pages they are crawling these pages they are looking for these pages and they are creating a net of the pages as you know that spider is creating a net so with the help of spider software they are creating a net in which they are connecting the pages and those connected pages will be indexed and stored in the search engine uh, database for the accessing so whenever you submit a search the search engine is basically looking for your query looking for a database looking for your query and searching the results from where the search engine is searching the database which search engine is created so this is a global search index for surface web so in this the indexing will be happen for these pages which is created with the help of the spiders so spider different pages pe ja rahe hain crawl kar rahe hain they are collecting the information and that information will be added to the database so when the people like us are trying to search something the information which is available in the database will be picked and will be given to the users so this option works when the content which is on the surface and index right but what about the pages that are not open for crawling how you are able to do that so that is available in the deep web whatever contents we can access in the surface web we can check that because that is we are able to index those things but if you are not able to index them but the pages are there how we can access those things that we will see in the deep web so after sub surface web we have a deep web so this is a kind of a structure of our web first we have a surface web which we can access as a public 
but then there are few things like medical records legal documents which are specific to an organization the pages are there you know that if you are working in an organization like the government resources the government resources the government papers are not publicly available unless and until they will be added to the surface web so what we need to understand is when we talk about the pages which are not added to the search engine that time the things will come in which the accessing part will come as a private thing you have a direct link to that page and you will be able to access that let's say you want to access a medical records so for that particular organization whatever medical records you have because you have a link to that medical record you can directly open that page and you can reach to that page but you cannot have that in the search engine databases also the legal documents scientific reports everything is coming under the deep web and in this deep web basically this is below the surface and approximately 90% of all the websites which you are not able to access from the public face that is coming under the deep web and that is basically just you can say that below the water if you see this this is a line and just below the border you have a deep web now if we say that uh, this is much larger as i told you because these are having many pages and these are the websites which are activated but then these are not the public face websites that's why these are not accessible by the public and also like we can say that as i told you that the protection is available over here so nobody else can use it so like the academic journals the medical records because these are the private databases these are private or sensitive information to particular organization and that's why these are out of reach to the public now this deep web also includes the portion which portion which we know as a dark web so this also have that portion which have a dark web because which is having a illegal information tor encrypted sites so we are going to see these things in the coming slide so like what we can say that what are there in the deep web is like the databases which have public and uh, privately protected files we can have intranets for the specific organization like in or your university also when you are working in a project so instead of going live initially you can start your own intranet you can host your applications on a local host you can test those things on different machines using the local host server and you can use that so intranets which are there in the enterprises or in the government sector or in the educational facilities which organization used to control their privacy or internal communication that is coming under deep web and also this refers to all the web pages which are unidentified by the search engine pages are there but search engine is not able to identify them that is also coming under the deep web also we can say that the crawlers are crawling them but they are not able to see those pages because these are not visible so few things if we want to say the websites which can be accessed with the username and password how we cannot see the pages which are there in the icici bank website because those pages require authentication you cannot directly access that that is the private domain where you need to give a username and password to show your authenticity that you are authorized to check this pages so these pages are also coming under the deep web like video on demand services like netflix amazon prime you can open the things which are available in the surface web but the pages which require the subscription where you need to have your account those pages will not be able to see from the google bling or any other search engine so that is coming under the deep web so we can say that deep pages or deep web pages are comparatively safe because your uh, accounts is containing the personal information crawlers are not able to access that so your data is little bit safer because but again you need to have a strong password so that nobody else can access that data so dark web is at the end of the web if you see over here so what we see is surface what we access with the uh, different organizational uh, area is deep web and after that we have a dark web so in the dark web we find the very very you can say that harmless con harmful content and activities and also tor websites i will show you that what is the tor so tor websites are basically located and also the uh, 
dark web is accessible by the anonymous browser that is a tor and onion uh, browser only so dark web content is mostly used for doing a drug trafficking or private communication or some kind of other malicious activities so that's how this dark web is uh, working so if we go to the dark web so these are the three parts which we are discussing right now surface web we discussed which only represent the 5% of the total internet content deep web represents about 90% of the total content and sites can't be accessed from the search engine we have seen why they are not able to access uh, search engines because they require a strong authentication like the examples are given email inboxes banking information credit card accounts so that is coming under the deep web but crawlers are not able to access that now when it comes to the dark web the sites that exist within the deep web but they are coming under the dark web also this can be only accessed with the help of a tor browser okay my pen is not with me dark web can only be only be accessible with the tor browser and used maximum for the illegal but can be used for the legal purposes also so and also dark web refers to the sites that are not indexed with the surface and only accessible by a specialized browser as i told you that tor browser is used for that and this is very very tiny also as compared to the surface web even though we are saying the 5% but it is very tiny because it is a part of deep web and also we have a limited number of website in that so what we can say is no web page indexing by a surface uh, web engine or virtual traffic tunnels are there in the dark web also we can say that dark web reputation is such that the criminals intent or illegal contents are available over there or the trading websites where the users can purchase the illicit goods or services so these things are coming in that also in certain extent we can say that all the illegal cyber activities we can say that is uh, coming under the dark web not necessarily that all is in the dark web but most of the activities if we see illegal cyber activities is like part of the dark web and uh, if you want to see more that how we can access the dark web so for accessing the dark web we have a tor browser because dark web uh, is like uh, very very provenance for the hackers for the law enforcement officers cyber criminals and also the, like new technologies which are coming like encryption anonymity browser softwares tor so it makes possible for anyone to dive into darknet so you can check on the google also about the tor and you will find the uh, browsers which are coming the onions and other things which are coming because it's the layers which we have in the onion same way you have a layers when you are browsing the pages you cannot see that but internally the work is just like a layers so you will not be able to find out that which one is the innermost layer or which one is the outermost layer so that's why it is called as anonymous because you are not able to reach to the place where you can find out that from where it is initiated and also the if you want to understand the nature of the internet so that there is no privacy when we go to the google we know that everything is a store but when you come to the tor kind of a browser it's completely anonymous the uh, everything is like anonymous and uh, because the tor as a web browser if you think as a google chrome or firefox is completely similarly looking like that only if you see the tor browser it's completely looking like that but then instead of taking the most direct route between the computer your computer and the deep part of the web this particular tor is using a random path as i told you that consider this onion as your example that how many layers are there you are directly not reaching to that page but you are using a different layers in that so this is also called as a individual invisible internet project in visible internet project also so we can access it using the tor websites and uh, you won't be able to find out that who is hosting this who is running this so these kind of information will not be visible to you now if we ask question to ourselves that is like uh, it is illegal to go on the dark web so i just want to say that it is not illegal to access the dark web 
and in fact some use a perfectly like we can say that perfectly legal because legal and illegal both the things are happening in the dark web so it's not that we cannot use it but on the dark web user can seek out basically three different benefits the three benefits is user anonymity means user is not known that is anonymous dusra virtually untraceable services and the sites so you have to use some different path as i told you that we have a layers in onion same way this particular browser is not using a single path or direct path to reaching to that it is using different layers right and also it it is ability to take illegal actions for both users and providers so that is also the benefit so these are the three benefits but you can use it uh you can access the dark web there is no harm in that that is no illegal thing which is there so if you say that is tor illegal to use so on the software and if you say that the use of tor and the other anonymized browser is not strictly illegal that is in use to uh, like you can say that uh, protect your identity to protect yourself but these like dark web browsers are not like uh, tender exclusively to this portion of the internet we can say that right and many users are now leveraging tor to browse both the public internet and the deeper parts of the web also so both the things you can do with the tor it's not illegal to use you can use it because the uh, government bodies uh, which are like we can say that which are participating in the unauthorized surveillance they are also using tor so it is not illegal to use but then you have to take care because uh, you are in the network where you have lot of people those who are with that intention if you are not very strong enough when you are entering into the dark web everything can be hacked from your side your system can be hacked your account can be hacked because people know that someone is coming into our territory and that that person is not very safe so your data can be like breached so if we talk about the types of the uh, threats on the dark web so what we are doing is that uh, dark web if we are using for uh, privacy purposes like uh, if we ask that dark web is dangerous for us so we can say that it is a dangerous place as i told you because the people those as we know that underworld we we see lot of movies and we see lot of things in the underworld kind of a thing so we see that that place is not safe similarly dark web is not safe if you are not attentive right so this is a dangerous place but then you can have the uh, different kind of threats the first is malicious software so it is againly a malware we know that malware is what a piece of a code which can be used to infect the different things now this malware is fully alive all across the dark web which you will not find in the surface web like the websites which are malicious which are compromised they will be having the malicious software but if you talk about the dark web it is fully alive all across the dark web and it is often offered in some portals to give threat actors the tools for cyber attack so that's why we can say that it is dangerous and also dark web does not carry as much of as as social contracts that website providers follow to protect users so even if you are traversing any website in the dark web because that website provider is not following the uh, privacy policy because that is anonymous so again you will be in a difficulty this uh, like the key logger software the botnet malware so these are the uh, malwares with which the users can be exposed in the dark web also the ransomware phishing malware so when you are exploring the uh, websites in the dark web you are putting yourself in the risk right so please take care when you are doing that and also like the government monitoring as i told you like many tor based sites being overtaken by police authorities across the globe now these are there is a like you can say that clear damage of becoming government target for simply visiting a dark website because they know that this person is visiting the uh, particular area so might be this person is involved in the activities which are under the dark web so a few things are there and scams are definitely will be there because they are looking for the people those who can give the profit to them 
like the uh, trafficking for the sex and the weapons, some other malicious activities. So we need to take care about the phishing scams which are happening because with the help of the phishing scam, they can trap you and then they can take a benefit from you. So dark web is not illegal. You can visit those things, but please be aware about the threats which are there. Now, how to access the dark web safely is trust your intuition. If you think that something fishy is there, just stop yourself, right? Because you want to protect yourself with the smart behavior. You have to be alert. If you see something very good, do not open that. New link, do not open that. Because not everybody is so attentive when they are accessing the internet. So that's why you have to trust your intuition. And every time you have to be attentive whenever you are opening or accessing anything. Also detach your online persona from the real life. Like what it means is like username and email address with real name should not be used as we generally use. But when you are going in the dark web, do not use your email IDs with your specific name, your designation, your detail, password should be strong. And even the credit card detail should not be used because they know that how to trace back to you. We don't know that how to reach out. But the people, those who are very strong in dark web, they know that how to reach out to you. Also, like many, the third point, if you see, the uh, many online security services now offer identity protection for your safety. And also be sure to take the advantages of these tools, which are active monetary of identity and financial theft, because uh, they are made available to you. But then what's happening in the, inside that, that is you are not available. And also explicitly avoid dark web file downloads because the problem can be that you are reaching there. So real time file scanning from an antivirus program like can be offered. And then when you are downloading it, maybe your system can be remotely controlled by someone else. So please take care of such activity. Also the ActiveX and Java in any available network setting, please disable all those things because these frameworks are notorious for being probed and exploited many a time by the attackers. So we should disable these things if we want to enter into the dark web. Also use a secondary non admin local user accounts for all daily activities. If you are accessing the dark web and also restrict you to Tor enable devices, right? Like protect your children and family members so that they will also not be indulged in that. And if you are interested, visit these areas, but then be safe if you want to access to the dark web and um, that's all for today's session. So please go through these points because this is very, very important. When we talk about the security, we should know about the three important aspects of the web that is surface web, deep web and dark web. So I thought that I'll take this point in front of you all so that you can explore more things and you can learn more things in that. But you can access the uh, dark web websites using Tor browser. But please make sure that you are doing it with the, uh, you can say that uh, properly with proper uh, precautions and then only open it. Otherwise, you will be in a trouble. So that's all for today's session. If you have any question, you can ask or maybe you can ask question in the next session also. Once you browse about the dark web, you access about the dark